Dude, if you're a above average tall yappy Asian guy and you feel like you want to act and you can do a backflip, I say <laughs> now's your chance. Yo, we just had to open up with that. That's crazy. Because you know what? A bomb just dropped this weekend on Hot Saturday. Pod Boys, Sans Nell, but we in the building. The news is out. Okay, David, Simu Liu, a friend of ours and a fellow kind of semi-YouTuber, has just been casted as Shang-Chi, who is going to be Marvel's premier leading Asian superhero in years to come. Shang-Chi, C-H-I. C-H-I, that's how they spell it. In other words, I guess in Chinese pinyin, we would spell it Q-I, right? Shang-Chi. In this video, we're gonna be discussing well, Shang-Chi is gonna change the game for Asians. I'm gonna set it off. It's important that it's Simu Liu and not really anybody else. He's a great pick, and it's important that he's picked as Shang-Chi because he's Chinese-born, Canadian-raised. He's kind of like one of us. If you guys look at Simu's story, he was an accountant, and you know he just wasn't happy with his kind of yappy, I guess like professional job, pursues acting, takes it very seriously, but then, you know, obviously he gets cast as the first Asian American superhero in world history. Yeah. Listen, he's he's kind of a YouTuber. Okay. He's made videos on YouTube before, although I wouldn't say he ever uh, based his uh, career off YouTube. And he's someone from the Asian community. We know that- Oh, he um, just threw a charity event that we all participated in in Toronto. Right. And he's a woke I mean, dude. He's one of us. I mean, basically, he talks a lot about Asian American male masculinity. Yeah. And um, he's, he's not the a first, I'll tell you this, Simo's the first guy, I gotta give him props, to go on national TV in Canada and say, what is up with how no non-Asian girls find Asian American men attractive at yeah. all? See, but the fact that there's even laughter now, yeah. some of these stereotypes are absolutely and totally untrue. And imagine being a kid growing up and first of all, first of all, having none of the girls want to date you and hearing more than anything that people are just not into Asian guys. Like really real it's really something that's even uncomfortable for asian guys to talk about amongst themselves like now, i don't know a single asian guy who really disagrees that asian men are underrated in social society in the west but i know a lot of people don't want to talk about it or are kind of like you know they're against talking about it because you know it seems weak or something like that but yeah. for simu a guy who definitely i'm sure obviously looking at him you probably would imagine he doesn't have a problem with women for him to stand up and be like no definitely i might not have this problem or, or he does, but on a different scale. Yeah, he does on a different scale. It's almost like... Definitely. David, there's going to be comparisons of Shang-Chi to Black Panther, and there's going to be comparisons of Simu Liu to Chadwick Boseman. What do you think about that? Because, and the only reason why I'm throwing it out there, now, I don't know if it's going to have the same impact as Black Panther, okay? I'm not saying that, by the way. But I'm just saying there is some parallels here. There's some parallels. Here, here's why there's parallels. Marvel is making this movie in 2019, 2020. 2021. It'll they come out. do not. Let me just say this. Shang-Chi originally, from what my research is, because obviously it's not a super famous comic book strip series, was based in stereotypes. Yeah. Like he's genetically created through like Fu Manchu, like finding yeah. a genetically beautiful yeah. or strong white woman or something. I don't know. Just it's really weird if you watch if you read it on Wiki. You, yeah. But they bought the series from somebody else and then they they try to rid it of the problematic elements. But then it's not the most popular Marvel comic, okay? They have an opportunity to make a pro-Asian film. And that's I'm, palpable for everybody. Yeah, it's palpable and accessible to everybody in the same way Black Panther, if you look at it, they got Brian Coogler. Brian Coogler did Fruitvale Station. Chadwick Boseman graduated from HBCU. He's very, very, very pro-Black. And very Black, much part of the community and you would say part activist. Yeah, and, and Black Panther was, first of all, I love that movie. It was even, you would almost say it was even more of just like a black American event, pop cultural event, more than it was a comic book movie. And you know, the funny thing is some of the comic book people, the really purest, purest, ultra purest comic book people, they didn't like it, but I actually liked that element of Black Panther. Well, because it reached an audience that was not Marvel fans. Yeah, and because there it was a whole, if you guys know the story of Black Panther, or at least the movie, there was a whole Martin Luther King philosophy versus Malcolm X philosophy. Killmonger was Mar Malcolm X. Black Panther was Martin Luther King. More so, I mean, essentially that was the analogy. Uh, Killmonger was more militant, which was oh. Malcolm X's philosophy about how to deal with being a minority in the society with uh, Bozeman. Let's stress the point that both Chadwick Bozeman 
and Simu are guys of the community that they come from. Heavily Simu, respected is, within the community. Is, Simu is not a, a gun for hire. He's not a random theater actor. He's not some guy who just popped up. He's not a model that just got thrusted into this role. He is a dude that we all know. Well, he's been talking about North American Asian issues for well, at least time. a couple of years publicly now, yeah. you know, so, and I'm saying he was on an saying, Asian I'm not TV. equating the struggles. No. I think the struggles are different yes. from each community, but I'm just saying I, that obviously Marvel's probably, if you made me bet, I don't know what's going on in their boardroom or anything. They're looking at the parallels between Simu and Chadwick Boseman. Yes. Between Black Panther and Shang-Chi now, they made a point to choose people from the community that were validated by the community that had done community work in some way before. Right. Because they know that, listen, Marvel franchises, whether whatever it is, Iron Man, they can last for so many years and so many movies. Well, you're part of the ecosystem. You're part of the ecosystem. When they pick you, it's not picking you just because you're a pretty face. Simu's good looking. But he's not even the best looking Asian dude. I've seen guys at the club in LA and New York that are technically probably better than Simu. There may have been greater looking people, but not greater people. Oh, Simu is from the community. And when, as a YouTuber and someone who just played basketball against Simu in this charity game, I gotta say like, I feel like I'm part of that. You and, know what I mean? And here's the weird thing about being Asian American. Outside of like very, very few a handful of people in Hollywood, Asian YouTubers are the community. Yeah. Not that we only represent, that we only, you know, that every facet of the community is represented amongst YouTubers, but sort of. Well, because all, oftentimes our fans are of the community as well. Like, have you ever it's seen- It's different than other groups where it's like, you have black YouTubers and then you have black Hollywood, which is in Atlanta. And then you have your black yeah. literal Hollywood people. Those are like three different tiers of entertainment. And then you have the hip hop industry. And then you have sports. Obviously, for Asians, we only have essentially 1.5 of those five tiers. And, and you want to know something that's interesting, David, is because, you know, I wasn't, you know, we're not from the black community. So I don't know what the news was like when they picked Chad Vick. Bo Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther, but I can tell you that there is a huge buzz amongst Asians. And one of the reasons why is that we talk about is because we have less representation. I mean, obviously, you know, black people are always fighting for their own representation in, in other ways, but they ha do have a lot of athletes, a lot of musicians, still a lot of actors, the coolest actors in the world, Denzel Washington, you know, he's black. Our president was black. So I'm saying there is quite a bit of representation on their end, but our our representation, especially for a Asian male, like is so few, so little that I think Simu getting it in a way caused a bigger ripple in our community. Well, because a, a lot of us topic. knew Simu or were friends with Simu. Yeah, and a lot of, and we had seen him around in YouTube videos or whatever in the community and then he gets it, then it's kind of like, whoa, and also looking one at, of us. Also looking at his story for him to pursue acting after being an accountant, how relatable is that? How Asian is that? You know, if you grow up with STEM parents, you know what I mean? Like you just know your life is very like sort of set in a certain way I mean, honestly i never thought that anybody from our ecosystem well aquafina is going to have a role in it as well but like i never guessed that anybody from that we made videos with or new people that they made videos with it never occurred to me that it could be possible to maybe reach that echelon of getting in the marvel universe anyways number two guys this is a we'll go through this point quick but number two it's just a win for likable jock asian guys because i think and I'll make this point is that I think a lot of the time in media, there's not a lot of millennial sporty Asian guy representation because Simu is going to be likable in this movie. He has to be likable. Marvel's going to make him likable. And he is actually likable in real life. It'll be like if Jackie Chan spoke English or something like that. I can't really think of a, a time that a full Asian guy. I mean, dude, Asian guys were so starved. We were trying to claim Keanu yeah. Reeves. Yeah. All right, who's, like, who's like a fourth. Another comparison to something that was very important to us was, you know, Jeremy Lin making it to the NBA first. And then obviously he struggled, but then he blew up with an insanity. I'm not saying this is an insanity moment. This isn't that yet because the movie's not out and I'll hasn't done well. For jocular Asian guys, it feels almost like something like insanity. It, you know, it's the other moment. It's like seeing, this is like when we heard that Jeremy was got a spot on a team. That's when we were like, oh, he's in the league. He's there. Now, if the movie does well, and I'm sure it's gonna do fine, that's gonna, I think that's the insanity right there. And this is, these are the moments. I think for me, another point was like Jabberwockies. When Jabberwockies won, 
But the okay. thing was, they wore masks. Yeah. I mean, I think there's different moments here no, and there. Uh, 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 Far East movement having in two number one singles. I would say, I would put this almost, uh, no offense to the dancers, but maybe as like the whole Asian thing with ABDC. Like that was cool. That was a moment where we all followed it. Just like we're all gonna follow this moment. Point number three, a bunch of people will have to say the phrase, Simu Liu is Shang-Chi. And a lot of people are gonna get the pronunciation wrong. And it's gonna be funny. Well, it's gonna be funny to see people. I could see some of the entertainment reporters being like, huh, what's going on here? Am I just like speaking Chinese? Let me tell you, those are four, Simu Liu and Shang-Chi are already four Chinese words that uh, I'm sure- Well, you already heard it at the presser. People dude, were- Dude, the, the lady already messed up Shang-Chi. How, uh, Simu? How, what was it like when you got picked to be Shang-Chi? No, no. And then, Shang -Chi. And then she's probably like, who's playing Mulan? Oh my oh, God. God. Don't say that. No, oh. hey, imagine people trying to do the Mulan presser. First of all, they already sweating bullets looking at their sheet of who is who. They're like, oh my God, can I color code <laughs> these people? Like, they're like nervously looking up and down, up and down. They're like, I just got Aquafina right, okay? And I'm, I'm still working on the others. You know, he walked out to the Comic-Con stage speaking Mandarin. Obviously, it was flowing because he's a native. He moved, he was born in China, raised there until five. He said, well, die Harbin Chu Shang Lao. Yeah. He, he, I felt like he didn't really have the Northern accent he much. He, he, left he, he tried to keep it more standard. But he did, I mean, he's good at Chinese. He's good. I mean, he's born there. So, I mean, I think it's interesting to see that the three crops, the guys that you would have gone out for this role, actually all born in China. Chris Wu's from Guangzhou. Ludi Lin's from Fuzhou and uh, Simu's well, from Harbin, which is Dongbei. Yeah, Harbin is way up there, by the way. It's way, way up there by almost like North Korea. And I think that's different because obviously previously it is true, like almost all the actors were from either Taiwan or Hong Kong. Yeah, Shanghai or roots in Taiwan and Hong Kong. And I think that it's cool because, you know, we spent some time in Beijing, which is uh, very much a Northern city as well. And uh, Dudes out there act a little different, and I'm not surprised who moves from there, from that area. You know, with they're a little bit more hardy, a little bit more conventionally proud, um, a little bit more just uh, bro rough and tumble broish, Mil yeah, militaristic. I mean, that's the easiest way to put it. If you guys know Chinese stereotypes, basically, dudes in the South would be almost like hipsters or like better businessmen. You know what I mean? Hipsters Hustlers. slash like merchants, and people in the North are like army people. Yeah. You know, like, I would say Southerners, hipsters, merchants, artists. And then northern guys, they're, you know, they're the ones eating mad thick cut noodles uh, in the cold. Army the politicians. Yeah. A lot of hot pot up there. All right, guys. Number four is that Shang-Chi is actually written to be half white and half Chinese, but Simu is full Chinese. So, so you're saying a full guy actually took a hopper role. Exactly. This is funny because usually it's the other way around. Usually they have, and, and many Bruce Lee uh, characters are played by ha half white people, even though Bruce Lee is a fourth. Also Henry Golding, who was half, and shout out to Henry. He's a really nice, great guy. He played Nick Young, who I th is supposed to be full. But so now it's a full guy taking a half role. So what does it mean? I think it just means that people, I don't know. I mean, I think they figured that's what he was the best fit and that's what people want to see. And especially if you're thinking about the Chinese market, I think it helps to have a full guy and especially yeah. a guy from Harbin. I think it just, uh, it just makes more sense. I mean, yeah. why, first of all, I don't think you're going to find that many hoppers that can do all those flips, like in no Kung Fu like that. You know what I mean? Like there's not, I don't like, there's a lot of physicality required for this role, you know? So like, from what I know, Simu is really acrobatic. He's really athletic. I've seen him do backflips. I'm sure he will get the martial arts movements down quite authentically. I think full Asian guys, we felt people were just going to give all the full Asian roles to Hoppas. Yeah. No, and, and for us to take one back, it's like huge because it's just like, I think there was a, just a general accepted thing in Western civilization that being half Asian male was the max and any more than 50% was like minus points. Yeah. Like yeah. the more genetically full Asian we were, the wackier it was. Yeah. It felt like, and there's no problem. Obviously I have no bone to pick with like the mixed kids, but it just felt like that they were going to get all the opportunities. They felt, I felt like they were going to get all the looks and that they because were Because they were more acceptable than no, multiple demographics. No, because they had more appeal. I'm not saying that's still not partially true. I mean, I mean, I think Hoppa still well, have what, a lot of what, appeal. I mean, Western people don't want a little bit of their look right. in someone's face. Right, but I, I just saying like we, we took a big role. And I like it. Is it funny, funny fact that a lot of the actors nowadays, a lot of the actors that we name that are pretty big, especially from Asia, are actually from Canada or Australia. Simu, Chris Wu, Ludi Lin, Godfrey Gao, Edison Chen, Nick Tsai, 
Eddie Pang, all from Canada originally, whether or not they're in Canada now. And then Ronnie Chang, our friend, is from Australia. Ronnie's kind of getting on too. You know, I think a lot of dudes... And even Henry Golding is from Malaysia and yeah, Britain. I think that... Um, so what does it mean that, David... I, I'm not saying... I don't want to dive too deep into this, but it seems like a lot of the Asian dude, and particularly Chinese guy actors, are coming from Canada. Long story short, I think that there's just more of an identity. You know... A lot of Asian American guys I know don't even feel comfortable being filmed on camera. That's how marginalized I think subconsciously they feel. And I don't think in Australia and Canada, they feel that way about their imagery. Yeah. Like, I think they get a lot more fob media over there. I think I mean, when I say fob media, I'm sorry, just motherland media where it's like, you know what I mean? And I just think there are more recent populations, like in terms of immigration wave and their self identity when they look in the mirror is completely different. And yeah. Especially when you migrate from Asia to one of those countries at a young age, you're just able to develop completely different than somebody who was born and raised in the U.S. I think we're just raised to play ourselves small, to be honest. And, yeah. you know, I'm not blaming anybody. This is just the way it worked out in the U.S. But for sure, let's just say this. You move from at five or ten from Asia to Canada or Australia, your sense of self-identity is completely different than Asian Americans. Fair. Also... Maybe Asian guys pick up a bunch of other ways to make money in America because America's such capitalistic. Yeah, I mean, there's other ways to get rich in America. You could just do real estate, burr properties, right. guys. Next reason, as a YouTuber, as somebody who knows Simu personally, I think him getting the role was very inspiring. It kind of injected this new energy into the scene, into everybody's minds. I'm sure we're not the only ones thinking about it. It reinvigorated us. For sure. I mean, I think just like Rich Chigga's number one single or number one, you know, iTunes album reinvigorated. I know a lot of um, Asian rappers that I know are like trying a lot harder than they were three years ago. I, I know a lot of Asian female comics that are taking it a lot more serious once Ali Wong and Aquafina. made millions and millions. And yeah, and Aquafina made, are doing it, you know. It's natural for a group, uh, especially in a front facing camera profession, as much as you say it shouldn't matter or you don't want it to matter, inevitably, your cap that you put on yourself, like the most of us are going to base it off what we've seen somebody who looks like us achieve. And, and you know what's funny is Whether that- that's right or wrong, maybe no. you shouldn't think Dude, that way. Dude, for a long time, people were always wondering, oh, why don't Asians pursue this career? Or, or like, why don't you guys do it? Why don't you guys feel confident that you can do it in entertainment? And it's like, well, well, for example, like, let's just say if you're a Caucasian guy, you pretty much have an infinite number of examples to go off of and an infinite number of comedians and actors and athletes to inspire you to do it. But for us, we have so few, you have to understand, it was like kind of scary to follow that model that yeah. was not proven well, you for us. Even, you couldn't even dream it. It was hard to imagine because it just hadn't really happened yet. It just Me, helps. It just means something to see somebody who's you relate to. It just- Because you, you feel like, even though we shouldn't feel this way, it just is this way because yeah. at the end of the day, you still feel like your cards in life are similar to people that you look like. People need a relatable face to connect with. To this day. So here's my next point about this. I definitely think Marvel is going to have to be careful and kind of sensitive with this one because there's some kind of weird and outdated and slightly offensive themes in the original Shang-Chi that I think they, they're going to tweak a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Such I'm as sure. the Fu Manchu thing, who's who's honestly an offensive character in, in Asian American well, he's culture. He's supposed to be his dad, right? Yeah, he's he's Shang-Chi's dad. And Fu Manchu is just like this character we laugh at. Yeah, it's bad. yeah. and I'm sure that um, that was based off a certain era in Western history where, and I'm not going to lie, some people still kind of <laughs> perceive Asians to be like that, to be honest. But like, not the people at Marvel. I'm sure there's a lot of diversity in their ranks They're now, thinking obviously. very hard about this. Yeah, and I'm sure they don't want to get it wrong because obviously, and it's not just economically, I'm sure they're thinking about what the moral thing to do is. But on top of moral considerations, there are economic considerations, aka China, which- AKA the money. AKA what will become the biggest consumer market on planet Earth. I um, need the dollars, dollars, you know, so dollars. I, so I think that obviously it's going to be a positive portrayal of Asian men and Asian culture. Look, do I think it's going to like change the world for Asian Americans? No, obviously not. But yes and well, no. What can? What yes can, and no. Right? Nothing. You guys, entertainment is fake, guys. But 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 guess what? Entertainment is driven by real forces. Yeah. 
the content of entertainment is also driven by real forces. And yeah. I think that, you know, it's just cool. It's cool to see. I'm so happy for Simu. He, he deserves it. I'm so happy that there is an Asian superhero. I would say this movie is, unless something weird happens, this movie's getting made. And guess what? This movie's getting a bunch of money pumped into it. This is probably the highest budget movie with an Asian American lead in history. Because it's probably going to be at least 120 to $180 million budget, which is a lot of money to put behind an Asian American or Asian North American, whatever you want to call them. Kung uh, Fu Panda, Big Hero 6, it doesn't count. Don't count, don't count. My last couple points is Marvel has a chance to rewrite the backstory and to make it new, I think that if the writers are smart, they'll do something with the Mandarin. They'll show respects to obviously Tony Leung, who's an amazing actor from Hong Kong. They, they really have a chance to put in a lot of a racist backstory, you know, something that it really explains something kind of like a Black Panther, something that cuts deep into kind of the conversation of today, something that's very up to date. Dude, Black Panther will. was like a societal conversation. Dude, commentary that was that was huge so i think that's what i'm hoping that uh marvel does Close this is enough. my major takeaways this closing like my hot takes man it's like and this is the reason why we let off with the title saying reasons that shang chi is going to change everything for asians which sounds like such an incredible overstatement right because it's just an asian character played by somebody we know in the marvel universe it was a little bit of clickbait it, it was a little bit of uh an overstatement but you guys Basically, we're finally starting to play a game that we've been sort of like left out of. Yeah. And when I say left out of, I could say kept out of, left behind, we shunned it. I don't want to- Or like, maybe we weren't strong yeah, enough to play, we whatever you want to say. Play. Basically, we're going to be playing the social high school popularity game of America. Finally. Yeah. Um, Asian men are. And even Asian women, if you really look at it, Mulan doesn't count because that's like takes place in China. I'm assuming some of this Shang Chi is going to take place. Not all of it's taking place in China. Some of it's Asian women are kind of in the game. Yeah, Asian women are kind of in the game. Better. Also, to be honest, I don't know why it is, and you could make ten podcasts about this. Asian women are almost not. They're viewed as something else. They don't necessarily. They're not viewed as like Asian only. No, no, Asian guys, and I we're guess we're like we're like representing everything on our shoulders. All right, like, trying to trying to simplify this without. Uh, falling deep into this rabbit hole is like Asian guys are like Asian Asian and then Asian women are like woman Asian in my opinion they're like and and I, I'm not saying this like actually in yeah. society like just what's the reality I'm just talking about media perception media like, listen media wise it's, they were getting on before us that's because, fine because listen some of you guys out there are going to be watching this being like you guys are so stupid <sighs> thinking that a movie's going to do anything for me in my life and you guys are actually right for saying that, but you have to understand that they, we exist as like blips in a much larger speckled like timeline of data points. Right. So just because you're saying that and you might be right about your life, we're talking about media shifting the entire tide that all the boats are on. I'm not talking about how you run the cruise ship of your life, like who's on deck, you know, who's the captain. You're in charge of that of your own, you know, essentially vessel. But I'm talking about a tide that affects the vessels. Yeah. Almost, and it's outside of the vessel's control. We're talking about big yeah. picture, cultural, social movements here. Trust me guys, depending on how close the water is to the top, one or two drops can make a huge difference. That's the point, that's the tipping point at that point. We're talking about breaking the surface tension. Breaking the surface tension, that's the tipping point. It's just like, it's like, you know, when you're playing that Korean drinking game where you don't want the, the shot glass of beer to fall into the soju. Yeah, it's your, someone has to put the last drop of soju in it. And I, I definitely think I view this as a potential tipping point. I don't know. You know what I mean? Because it's tough I, for me to judge. I'm not, guys, look, you listen. guys gotta talk to Jeff Yang. I'm not. <laughs> that much of Jeff a big Yang picture cultural the, critic, the, you know? Jeff Yang is the guru. But uh, I think, obviously, he just got announced that it's him. The movie's not even out yet until 2021. It's going to take like a year and a half to make, film, market, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But we just know it's a symbol of change. And this is why it's inspiring to us. It's why, it's why it's, it should be inspiring to other people. And that's why Jeremy Lin was inspiring, because it was just a moment of change. We can do it. You know, honestly, we, right now, between, obviously, Simu getting cast, Aquafina's killing it. Our friend Ronnie, Ronnie Chang just opened up for Dave Chappelle in New York. And I just feel it's like it's seven years ago. Uh, if you guys know seven years ago, there was just this energy in YouTube that was like anything's possible if we just keep at it. We keep creating, we keep attacking. 
we keep just like doing our thing. Anything's possible. And I think that feeling went away for the past three or four years. I don't know why. It just feels like it just left the game. Yeah. And if this feels like a breath of fresh air back into it. By the way, I know that not everybody's Chinese. I get it. They're basing it off Chinese characters. Crazy Rich Asians was about Chinese. That's fair. I get yeah. it. I get you it. You have to acknowledge that. I have to acknowledge that. I get it. I do think it affects all Asians because everybody thinks all Asians are Chinese. Yes. But I understand internally within the Asian world why there's like, oh, why does it always got to be this? Or why does it always got to be that way? Listen, that's why me and Andrew do make an effort to be really, you know, pan-Asian with it and stuff like that. Yeah. And inclusive. Inclusive of, of, of everybody. Um, yeah. But, uh, but listen, I get it. I get it. I think that that's a discussion for another time. Listen, if I, somebody, me, I get it. not everybody got a fair chance at becoming Shang-Chi, you probably had to be Chinese. And that's a fact. I and, knew people trying yeah. to take 23 and me, trying to point at like 13% ah. on the DNA test. They're like, can I go out for it? Some people were saying they're half Chinese. Who knows? But I'm just saying like, that's true. It's a fact. And it's not to explain the situation, but it is true that the Chinese market is so huge that they're going to demand a Chinese person. And just as like at a point in time for most of K-pop, they wanted Korean people. Yeah. So I'm like, it just, it makes sense. But I just, it's a whole different discussion. It's not to leave anybody out, but that th when it comes to entertainment, there's like, they have to think about so many things. I'll tell you guys this. Let's close it. I out. think that for, especially for Asian guys, the majority of stereotypes they're suffering from are sort of like Chinese stereotypes. If you think about wow. it, um, useful, but shy, know, and shy, sheltered, robotic nerds that are not good at sports. Yeah. Those are actually Chinese stereotypes. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and, you know and, to honest, and to be honest, some <laughs> they're groups, all over, all no, no, over Asian stereotypes, but they're particularly Chinese. Yeah. So, think about it. The Being, more Chinese stereotypes we can break, if everybody thinks all Asians are Chinese, it's gonna be good for everybody. Nobody's gonna be like, hey, oh my God, Shang-Chi, I really look up to him. What are you? Oh, you're not from Harbin like Simu. I don't, it doesn't count. Then nobody's gonna think that, okay? I think that, you know, it's funny that this is like another podcast topic, but as Chinese, have the biggest number of Asian people. They were the number, some of biggest the first, number of people on earth. Biggest dude. number of people. They were the first ones in America that were Asian, Asian, you know, very super Asian. And it's like, they may have uh, been responsible for a number of the Asian stereotypes, both good well, and bad. Also, there's a lot of Chinese people that are come back, going to come back and break it. So it's kind of like a full circle. I don't know. I guess the people who made it got to be the people who break it. I'm not saying, no, I'm not for saying sure. others don't. I'm not, I'm not saying no, for no, sure. I gotta see, like, it's funny because obviously Koreans and all, all so many other Asians that are in the game, they, they break them on many levels. I don't know. This part's confusing. But anyway, I'm guys, just saying, we're just talking about population wise, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm being mathematically honest statistics. Yeah. Um, anyway, so guys, thank you so much for watching that video. The reasons why that Shang-Chi, Marvel's new Asian superhero, is going to change the game. And it's changing the game because Simu Liu was casted as Shang-Chi. And That's I gotta give video. a shout out to him. Um, thank you for inviting us to the uh, Night It Up yeah. tournament. Mark him Toronto. Hey, it's funny because this podcast, we were supposed to do this with him. Uh, we had invited him to do a podcast in Toronto. We're back in LA right now, but... Not about the Shang-Chi thing. Not about the Shang-Chi thing because we didn't know. But actually at the time that we were playing against Simu, he knew he was pretty much going to be Shang-Chi. So he kept it a secret. That's why I hit all the shots. Hey, I, I gave him that work, too. I gave him that work, too. We'll just air the clips. I gave him that work, too. But anyways, shout out to Simu. Uh, we're so happy for him. Shout out to Aquafina. Happy for her and all her success. She's in, like, every single movie now. So, like, man, Aquafina, she on a next level. So, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, just to wrap it up, you guys, like I said, if somebody wants to say you guys are always overrating the importance of entertainment, I get it. But trust me the way Western society works, it's a bigger deal than you think. It's a big deal. I mean, it's a, yeah. it, it, there's, it's symbolic of a lot of other things. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching that video in the comments down below. Let us know what you guys think about this topic. Let us know if there's any of the reasons why, any other reasons that we missed on why it's a big deal or in the comments, go ahead and tell us why it's not a big deal. Maybe you don't care about media. Maybe you feel like it's not doing anything for your life. That's fair, completely fair. But anyways, leave it, leave a comment. Hot pot boys. Yeah. Hot pot.
podcast. We bring in the deep podcast. We still going. All right, everybody. Thank you. And until next time, we're the Fung Bros and we're out. Peace. Peace.